Welcome to the Needful Crafter, where crafting brings joy and sanity to my life. Today I thought for my second video I'd like to share my Singer 221 Featherweight Sewing Machines. Um, recently I've been watching Lori Holtz and this is how I learned about them. Um, she has several which are beautiful. But I just fell in love with them and I decided that I needed to get one. Well, maybe two. Maybe a third one. But anyway, I love them. They range, they're small in, in size. As you can see, my Elna behind it is probably about twice the size. And it probably weighs about, I don't know, 25 pounds, 20 pounds, something like that. The Singer weight only weighs around 12 pounds. They're very nice, small, compact. They're easy to take, like if you have a quill guild or what have you go to take with you sewing. They don't take, you know, a whole lot of uh, str strength to move around, which is good for me. Anyway, let me introduce them. This one is Lucy. She's from 1951, May 10th. Um, you can tell what year they're from by, if you look on the bottom, if you can see on the bottom, it's kind of hard to see, there's a number here, and you can take that number and go to the featherweight shop. They have a list of years, uh, listing what year your machine is from, which is really nice. And this one over here is Edith. She is from 1940, April 10th. And um, both of these I bought on eBay. This one um, was in pretty much perfect shape, ready to sew, right out of the box, everything. This one here, this girl took a little bit of work, but she is now stitching a wonderful stitch also. And, uh, I just love both of them and the one I think is unique about this one is it has a face plate they call it Egyptian face plate and it's just beautiful work I can't imagine the the workmanship on that is just so pretty and but it's confusing to me because this machine like I said was from 1940 and excuse me she needs a little bit of cleaning up yet I just got her back um, but the faceplate on the featherweight shop says that that was used in 1934 to 1937. So I don't know if this one was missing a plate and they put one on or why there's that different in years. Because the machine is from 1940. But the plate uh, dates earlier. So anyway, but I don't care. I still love both of them. This one here looks a little rough. This one I might actually get repainted. And I don't know if I'm going to get... Some people get them painted really bright colors. But I might... I'm kind of a traditionalist. And I might just keep it um, black. But I don't know. Purple might be nice too. But it's really worn. The decals on it. Which is a shame. And this one here on this other machine... The decals are still in fairly decent shape, so I don't think I would do anything to it right now. But, uh, and another unique one I forgot to mention about this one is it's a Centennial. And that was made in 19, they brought them out, this is 1951, but it was for in celebration of the Singer Company. And... It's just, you know, an awesome, they're just a neat little machine. And I will say, in comparison to my Elna, it's 20 years old, which is old and needs to be replaced. It has all the special stitches, the bells, the whistles, but if something breaks on it, I can't get any new parts. Whereas on this one, it's so simple. I mean, you have a few gears and what have you, but that's about it. Everything, you can get replacements. The Featherweight Shop and even Nova Montgomery's store are amazing for buying parts and what have you. And, um, you know, it's just a simple little machine. 
and probably the biggest thing is oiling and greasing. Now, on the new machines, some of them don't even need oil. Maybe one or two spots. This one, it has a probably about 20 plus places that need to be oiled. And probably three or four places, or no more than that, probably about, you know, maybe about three or four spots you have to use grease. And you have to use grease, you can't use oil. Because if you do, oil after a time will harden and it will be like varnish and you can ruin your machine. So you need to make sure you get an approved oil, or oil and grease. And I would strictly buy from either Nova or from the featherweight shop. And, uh, but you know, there's a lot of modern things you can still use on them. Like there's newer feet. You can actually get a walking foot for your featherweight. Um, you know, so you're not limited by not being able to do certain, using certain feet and what have you, but cause you can buy like zipper feet, quarter inch feet, you know, you can do just about anything. It just doesn't do all the fancy uh, stitches. This pretty much just does a straight stitch and that's it. You also can do, this is the lever for uh, adjusting stitches, it's stitch length. And if you put it all the way to the top, it'll do a reverse stitch. That's all it does. Straight stitch, reverse stitch. And the lights on these are so much better than they used to be. Used to be they had the old style of bulb that if you barely bumped your hand, it would burn you. But nowadays they have a new bulb that's like an LED halogen light. And that's what's in there now. It's very bright. But see, it doesn't get hot at all, which is really nice if you ever had that happen. And I don't know if I remember, did I mention her name? I can't remember if I said, but anyway, this is Lucy. And I named her after my grandmother who first shot me taught me how to use a sewing machine and then it was an antique but she had an old treadle machine and that's the first sewing machine I ever used um, to stitch on it was for a high school stitching project so that was interesting and I just uh, can't say enough about them they're just a really nice little simple machine don't forget Edith. Oh, and of course, Edith. I'm not sure if I mentioned her name. I'm sorry if I seem to ramble. But this is out of my comfort zone to do videos, but I'm trying. Anyway, she's Edith. I named her out of, uh, after a lady that did costume design for movies in the 60s. I'm not sure if she was alive in the 70s, but her name was Edith Head. And she just did a lot of great movies, and I'm kind of a movie buff. Anyway, the, probably the other thing I'd want to mention is, like I said, go to Nova's, go to um, Featherweight Shop for all kinds of tips and things you can learn. And you just want to, you know, just it's just a wonderful little machine. Awesome. Anyway, let me show you. I think it does a phenomenal stitch. Very quiet little machine. One thing you want to do is, even on your newer machines, hold your threads. Because that'll save you a lot of grief getting um, thread jams. Thread jams are not fun. Like I said, you can do a reverse stitch. And 
And the other thing you want to remember is to bring your needle all the way up before you pull it out. That'll keep you from getting thread jams too. But this does an amazing stitch. I don't know if my Elna ever did. You can see where I didn't hold the thread as good. That's what, that's what you don't want to do. So there I showed you not what to do too. But anyway, um, I hope you like this video and, you know, maybe one day you'll have a featherweight in your future because when this one, st the Elna stops running, this one will still be going. But anyway, if you like, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. That will help me greatly. And I hope everybody has a blessed day and good health oh one more thing i wanted to share this when you put a needle in a featherweight most new machines i don't know if the phone i'm still using a phone but we'll bring it up but there's a flat side to this needle you can see it's flat most new machines it goes in the flat side to the back this you want the flat side on the left out so I bought this from the featherweight shop I'm kind of a gadget person and you poke it down in there and see it holds the flat side like you want it to be and then you put your needle in you loosen your needle bar I'm not going to do it because I have one in there and you line it up and you put it in you make sure it's pushed all the way up and you tighten it but it'll help you put your needle in right every time. But anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope everyone has a blessed day. And good night. Bye.